broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for joining KGI's bar processing session. Uh, my name is Kat Wang. My, uh, I'm from the admissions team, and today I'm very honored to have uh, our Dr. Shen Lo, the director of MGM Processing Center at CAC Graduate Institute. So CAC Graduate Institute is a member of Claremont Colleges. We are southeast of Los Angeles, 40 minutes away from the biotech hub of um, from San Diego to Irvine and San Francisco. So we have great um, advantage in location and we have strong tie to um, the biotech industry. So uh, now we will welcome Dr. Xiong Lo to start the session on talk about engineering career in bioprocessing. Uh, thank you very much, Kat, and uh, good morning and welcome to this uh, session. Uh, the title of my uh, presentation for uh, today is uh, The Excitement of Biopharmaceuticals. Uh, this is a presentation I give uh, to uh, students from universities and colleges, people uh, that are doing their undergraduate degrees and are starting to think about their careers uh, beyond graduation. Uh, I hope you will find it useful and I hope if you do find it useful, you will come back and want to ask more. There is a lot that KGI and Amgen Bioprocessing Center can offer to help you make your decision as to whether uh, this industry is uh, where you want to build your future career. Okay, with that, let me proceed and uh, uh, move on to slide number one. Uh, as uh, Kat just mentioned, KGI is a member of the Claremont uh, University Consortium. Uh, these are, uh, and the, you, you see on the slide, the list of the uh, colleges that are under this umbrella of University Claremont University Consortium. Some of these universities are pretty old, uh, as old as over 100 years. Others, like KGI, is relatively new. In fact, KGI is the youngest and the smallest of these colleges. They, uh, the, each college specializes in a specific area. They are amongst the best uh, universities in the country. In fact, uh, consistently, US News report uh, national ranking uh, ranks these colleges amongst the top 40. For example, Pomona uh, is right now uh, number six, Clement McKenna number eight, uh, Harvey Mott number 12, Scripps number 26, and Pitzer number 33. So we are in a very good group of universities. In fact, uh, believe it or not, uh, Claremont is uh, well known as the uh, city of trees and PhDs. It is, for all intents and purposes, a university town with a lot to offer uh, if you should you decide to come and uh, study in Claremont. KGI focuses on uh, life sciences. We do not provide undergraduates. Students typically uh, receive their undergraduate degree in one of these other colleges. And should they decide to go into the bio industry, they come to KGI to receive a specialization in, in the field. Uh, right now, for example, we have four students in our uh, programs from Claremont uh, McKenna alone. Uh, on this slide, you will actually see how KGI uh, operates. We don't have uh, traditional departments. We are organized by centers, and each center specializes in a specific area. As you can see here, uh, all of these centers are built around the bio industry, life sciences. Uh, within li life sciences, as you can see, we cover just about anything that may be of interest to you, from uh, everything from uh, the business of biosciences to medical devices to uh, investigation and uh, discoveries, uh, for example, in the rare disease and pharmaceutical development, to regulatory and quality, and finally to bioprocessing, which is effectively about 
the biomanufacturing and making of affordable medicines. So if you have any interest in life sciences, you should be able to find something that would be of interest to you. I, I promise you this. So in, in um, bioprocessing, uh, the Amgen Bioprocessing Center, our aim is relatively simple. This is defined by the output that we have. Uh, we prepare graduates through a whole range of uh, teaching and training programs for careers for transition into the bio industry. And if you've not come across the bio manufacturing, the bio industry that I'm talking about, this is uh, the basis of uh, something like a $200 billion industry every year. This is the kind of uh, industry we're talking about. It's very, very rich in terms of resources and career opportunities. Uh, I have listed here uh, some of the areas, some of the key areas that you may be interested in and you want to go into, modern vaccines, recombinant proteins like monoclonal antibodies, uh, proteins if you've, uh, if you've ever come across uh, medicines like insulin, human growth hormones, uh, tissue plasminogen activated, these are all the kinds of medicines, advanced medicines that we are talking about. And of course, we are, the whole industry is moving rapidly to other types of therapies. You may have just recently heard of a very important therapy which is uh, what we call the CAR-T chimeric antigen uh, therapy based on T cells and a company in uh, the Santa Monica area called Kite Pharma uh, is one of the key players in this space. They were just uh, purchased by, uh, for $12 billion uh, by Gilead. In fact, that discussion is going through right now. So we have a three out of nine of our graduates last year or this year, 2017, joined Kite Pharma, just to give you an indication of where our graduates usually go. Uh, gene therapy, stem cell therapeutic, tissue engineering, regenerative medicines, these are really therapies of the future. Should you decide to join this discipline, very likely you will be working in some of these areas. Some of these areas, in fact, maybe tissue and regenerative, it will be available maybe 20, 30 four years from now. So we're talking about not just uh, therapies that are available today and we teach and train our uh, students for these positions, but we also focus on future therapies. Uh, including stem cells, tissue engineering, regenerative medicine. And that, you see, I find uh, to be the excitement of biopharmaceuticals. Here are, I, I just mentioned um, uh, the, the recent graduates. Uh, we have a program which I'd like to share with you, and that is the Master of Engineering in Biopharmaceutical Processing. The program started modestly with uh, nine students last year, and these are the graduates. And you see under, under each of the names, the companies that they have, uh, they have gone to. And here are in the middle, uh, Brent, Emily, and Evelyn uh, are now working with Kite. Uh, Heather on the top with Boeing uh, Ingelheim, a very a major um, uh, CMO, contract manufacturing organization in the Bay Area. Brian Song, advanced engineering, really design of processes, and only is working with a process development company as a scientist. The three students right at the bottom, uh, uh, Chi Chi, Duke, and Johnny, all wanted to go to medical school after graduation. And we are very, very pleased to say that they are uh, on their way to medical school. So you can see I'm very, very proud that we have effectively 100% success rate in placing our students where, uh, where they want to go. Right now, we have 17 students in the first year of the Master of Engineering program and 25 students in the first year. So we are growing 
But like, I'd like to mention this, uh, like all other Claremont universities, we are relatively small and we pride ourselves in the small number of students we take. Each of these colleges that I mentioned early on uh, probably take no more than uh, a thousand students. In fact, a thousand is on the high side. All together, all of these colleges together will have less than 10,000, probably eight or nine thousand. So we are relatively small and we provide a very hands-on what I call student-centric education. This is very, very important for us. The other important thing I want to leave with you is uh, uh, we are uh, definitely KGI is on, uh, in, uh, unlike many universities, we have very close ties and partnership with industries. Many of our faculty and uh, uh, um, uh, external speakers, um, what we call guest speakers, are from industry, and I will share this with you uh, shortly. But and but here on this slide, I just wanted to share with you just one of those uh, graduates from last year, and to see where she came and how she progressed to finish as an MNG program and what she did. Here is you can see that she joined KGI in uh, a couple of years ago and she she worked on a, an independent research project uh, on cho i don't know whether you are familiar with this term this is chinese hamster ovary cell line it's the workhorse of industry for manufacturing all those uh, molecules that i mentioned you know tissue plasminogen activators monoclonal antibodies drugs that are out there on the market are manufactured using this particular type of cell line and so uh, and uh, did an internship internship is a very important part of uh, the mng program in fact also the master of the bioscience mbs program uh, and spent a, a summer with genentech in oceanside and then she decided at that point when we developed the master of engineering program she decided to switch from the mbs to the mng and she uh, uh, did a team masters project which is again sponsored by industry these are probably some of the best uh, programs we have courses we have where the students actually work on a real life challenge problem that is given to us by industry in her case the company is a major company manufacturing of technology called the spectrum laboratories and she worked on a very interesting project as part of that tdp team design project is a second year capstone course in the MNG program and in that project she was part of a team all of those nine students you saw on the previous uh, slide they all worked on a, pro a project in fact to design a process and facility to manufacture a biosimilar to Humera um, again, I don't know how much you know about uh, uh, the industry that I'm, I'm referring to, the biopharmaceutical industry, but Humira is a drug, uh, probably one of the best selling drugs ever. Um, it generates in excess of $16 billion uh, each year. It's for uh, RA and multiple other indications. Uh, it has it just ran out of uh, patent in US in 2016 and it ran out of patent in Europe a couple of years earlier and many companies are trying to now make what you might call generics version of this particular molecule. In the biopharmaceutical space we don't call these generics we call them biosimilar for very good reason. Again, one of the things we will teach you is all of these uh, differences between biopharmaceutical and traditional chemical pharmaceutical. And you will see how those differences. In any case, the students had a great time and really hands-on experience in dealing with this uh, challenging process design. Here is an example 
of the next generation of molecules that I'm talking about. If you look at this screen, you see uh, almost half a dozen uh, different type of molecules. Uh, the CAR T cell at the bottom uh, of the screen, you know, the, the, the sphere that you see on the CAR T cells, that is the one that I mentioned um, is made by Kite Pharma. But our students, uh, last year, the Humera is a full monoclonal antibody, the blue uh, one, two, three, the fourth molecule on the top. That is the one that the students are engaged in. This year, uh, students have two uh, different projects because the number of the students are now growing. We have 17 students. We have divided them into two groups of eight and nine, and each group was working on a specific uh, molecule. Very real molecules that, you, that are either on the market or very close to reach the market. So, uh, what I want to say is here on the on the here I have actually defined what uh, biopharmaceutical uh, process engineering is about. It is, and this is a formal definition. And hopefully, if you join us, if you decide to follow this career further, you will have an opportunity to see exactly how we bring together these three elements elements that I call engineering principles, life science discoveries, and business models. Okay? And, and, and they, we bring these together in order to make uh, affordable, affordable um, therapies for patients. And those uh, therapies are all the ones that you see uh, uh, on the top and many more that are yet in discovery. So biopharmaceutical process engineers effectively take discoveries that come from life sciences, develop processes and manufacturing operations in order to uh, make affordable drugs and medicines for the community, but at the same time, making sure that processes and manufacturing operations that they put together make business sense. Because as we all know, if they don't, if they, you don't have the business model built in, no one would invest in these things. And discoveries simply remain discoveries. And there are, just go in the internet and search. There are many, many discoveries out there that haven't made it to market because the business model isn't quite there for them. Here is a simple example I've taken, and I can give you uh, many different examples uh, here, but I just took cancer as a very specific example. These are what you see on this slide is a picture pictorial, you know, a cartoon representation of a B cell. Now, you know very well, most of you, I think you uh, have science background, you know that B cells are a group of uh, cells that a body has in order to fight with foreign uh, invaders. So these are part of what we call the immune system. They are designed by nature to fight uh, things that enter your body that shouldn't be there, immune system. But uh, now and then, think bad things happen, uh, maybe through mutations, maybe through aging, maybe the, we don't really understand some of the reasons why these B cells go wrong and go bad uh, and start attacking the body's good um, parts, good molecules, good uh, tissue and organs. And at that point, these B cells become effectively malignant and cancerous. They lose control of growth and they will grow. And if cells start growing with no control, that is effectively your the cancer cells. So cancer cells are no, in effect, no different to other cells in the body. The, the exception is that they, they have lost control of regulating their expansion and growth. And so they become malignant and they start causing serious harm. 
many, many therapies have been designed against these uh, malignant cells. And if you look at the outside of these um, uh, sphere that I call the blue sphere, I call B cells, you can see all kinds of proteins, receptor proteins, surface proteins, and these are given names. For example, CD20, CD22, CD19. These have been studied by scientists for many, many years, and these are receptors that can recognize and respond to signals from outside, the environment outside. And so, for example, uh, when a cell goes bad, uh, it expresses a receptor called CD19. You see here, CD19. Normally, if you have a two, if there is a tumor cell, uh, this you can see on the on the set of three slides that are underneath this screen, you can see a T cell. A T cell is another. Uh, one of those immune uh, cells in the body, when a tumor cells is detected by the T cell, the T cells is turned on, is activated, and then goes into action and in, in order to destroy that tumor cells. Now, the T cell also has all kinds of receptor proteins. And some of these receptor proteins I have highlighted here, this so-called PD-1 receptor. PD stands for a, a programmed death cell receptor. And normally these receptors are what we call checkpoint receptors. They're either turned on or turned off. Of course, if, you're, if you have a healthy a person, all those T cells are turned off because you don't want the T cells in the body turn, turned, in a turned on position. So when, uh, when a T cell approaches a tumor cells, those receptor proteins, PD-1, for example, will start receiving signals. But the tumor cells, specific types of tumor cells, have developed uh, over many, many years, maybe thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, they have developed mechanism of hijacking some of these receptors on the T cells, including the PD-1 receptor cells. So the uh, malignant cells can actually control the receptor cells on the T cells and stopping them from becoming activated. This is how the B cells can carry on, the malignant cells can carry on dividing and expanding. Well, here is a company that decided they wanted to develop a drug to intercept uh, this action by the tumor cell. That uh, deve they developed a full monoclonal antibody that latches on to the PD-1 receptor, stopping uh, the malignant cells uh, uh, interfering with the action of that cell. And that very simple mechanism of action has proven exceptionally powerful, developed and has ended up uh, becoming a key drug, in fact, called Keytruda. Keytruda, I urge you to go out there in the internet and find out a little bit more about Keytruda because it's proving probably one of the most important discoveries and by manufacturing in, in, the, in, the, in the last couple of years. And the accept, ex, expectation is that it will grow into a multi-billion dollar industry. And some of you may recognize uh, the, the face of um, President Jimmy Carter, who was diagnosed with, with, uh, with this malignant, with this particular type of skin cancer, and was treated with Keytruda. And uh, thankfully, uh, within a short time, his cancer completely disappeared, and he's now free of cancer. And so we, in fact, this, we picked this Keytruda 
as one of the team design projects. Remember, I talked about Humera last year. The Keytruda is one of the team design projects for the students this year. Nine of the nine of the second years will be working on this. Actually, now saying, okay, we know this works, but now how do we make manufacture enough Keytruda to treat millions of patients out there, not just in the USA but globally? Uh, this is a major, major uh, undertaking. And by the time our students complete their design project, they are for all intents and purposes ready for transitioning into industry and working on the next generation uh, k Truda or expansion of the market for this k Truda. So we are very, very proud of that. And I want to tell you also on this slide, uh, if you look closely, I have tried to summarize uh, all of the major global causes of death in uh, the world. And they are major and massive. Keytruda and cancer is just one. There are heart related diseases. There are diseases that are to do with the brain and memory and, and uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson. And if you look at each of these areas and look at the statistics I have listed for you, you will see why it is important that we continue not only the discovery of these biologics, biopharmaceutical, but also their manufacturing. So uh, here is a, a very high level slide of how we do what we do. Amgen Bioprocessing Center um, provides a, a range of programs and services to KGI. So we provide services, for example, we have introductory courses for students who just want to find out about the importance of bioprocessing. We have that within the uh, MBS program. But we also have a Master of Engineering, which is a two-year stand-alone program that prepares students for, as I said, uh, rewarding careers in technical and other areas within the biopharmaceutical industry. I want to make sure that I will I talk about, at least mention to you, a major, major opportunity, which I hope many of you will decide to take on. And that is the KGI's Amgen Bioprocessing Center Summer Internship Program, B-Suite. This is designed for people specifically like you, people who are doing their first degrees, either in life sciences or in engineering, but don't haven't yet made decided what which direction they want to go beyond the first degree. Uh, it, this is a seven week long rotational program within the uh, uh, laboratories that we have, uh, working on a small team and individual projects, just like the K Truda project I mentioned to you. Um, over seven weeks, you spent uh, looking at just the challenges of uh, from discovery all the way to uh, market, if you like. We have people every week. Uh, th there are four or five faculty members that are fully engaged in this. We also bring key speakers from industry every week to talk. This is our Friday uh, lunchtime seminar series. Um, this, by the way, is from uh, the student's point of view, is free. Uh, and we have a very modest, modest scholarship that we give. It is competitive. You need to apply for this. Uh, colleagues from the admission and Amgen Bioprocessing Center will look at the uh, applications and decide whether you're likely to benefit from this uh, or not. And based on that, we would go. This year, in summer of 2017, we, have, we had 40 students who participated in that, uh, in that uh, uh, program. And they, they had a really, really good time. And uh, if I ever get to the end of my slides, uh, you, you, you'll you see them. But if I don't, the slide, I've, I've been promised that the slide will be available 
on the webinar and you can go and look through them. And if you find the B-suite program of interest, please come and talk to people in admission and, and Amgen Bioprocessing Center. We have also, you, I, I did say about our extensive uh, uh, network of industry. Here are some of those companies and just the selection. We have many more. I talked about uh, people from industry that come and teach on our courses. I ask you to look at and check these people on site. They are all uh, senior people from industry, either recently retired or are still uh, in, in, uh, in uh, company positions. Very, very prou proud of, of having people like uh, uh, these people on, engaged in the program. Here are the full faculty members at KGI that are engaged and involved in the program. And we are growing also. We are growing uh, as, a, as a unit. Uh, the MNG program, I have a whole set of uh, slides. I know we are probably running out of uh, time. Uh, how long uh, is left on the webinar? We still have a decent 30, 25 minutes. Okay, very good. So I can carry on talking about this uh, program. So this is the Amgen Bio uh, uh, Processing Center. This is the two-year Master of Engineering program. It, as I said, it's a two-year program. It's cohort based, which effectively means you, students come together and leave together. Okay, uh, be, be, team, small team, hands-on project. This is unique about uh, KGI, and this isn't just about MNG. Other programs have this approach. And if you recall, I said uh, the reason why we are able to provide these very small team hands-on projects is because of the relatively small size of the programs and student cohorts. Industry-led team design projects, the TDP I mentioned to you, Keytruda, I met Humera, we bring in dozens of people from industry for each of these projects to teach the course. For example, with Humera, I had the senior vice president of a company called Coheres. In fact, if I go two slides back, you will see here uh, Vince Anesetti, the uh, number one there. He is uh, from Coheres, uh, executive uh, VP of regulatory and quality, and really one of the companies engaged in making a, a biosimilar to Humera. And then the third person, uh, Rick Litt, and the fourth person, Steve Mandeville from Amgen, guess what? They too are also engaged in making a biosimilar to Humera. So these people come in and talk about their experience and lead the discussions, lead. So it's a very real uh, project that we are talking about here in uh, team design project. This year we have Keytruda and another molecule, which is also very, very exciting. Conference style seminars and lectures, very important. Um, some of the courses that we deliver are actually part of uh, conference courses that we deliver to people in industry. Uh, right at the beginning, three weeks ago, we had a three day conference on regulatory and quality. Again, the names I just mentioned, my colleagues Vince Anesetti and uh, Rick Litt, Steve Mandeville were here delivering a three day course uh, to people from industry and also our uh, Master of Engineering students. Um, this, would, uh, this is very unusual. It's, it's as if you've gone to a conference rather than a traditional one hour lecture a week for eight or 16 weeks. We try and bring the students as quickly as we can into contact with industry people, senior industry, as well as people who are actually practicing. This is what we call our capability, our ability to network with industry. And almost from week one, students are in contact with industry. This is part of the transitioning of our students to industry beyond graduation. And we are very good at that. You can see in here, uh, I, I mentioned the uh, companies that uh, recruited our uh, graduates. Better than 95% job placement. Industry internship. Uh, I, let me just tell you, this year we had 17 students and all of them, all of the students who wanted to have industry internship had industry internship. I say all because I recall 
three, two students, three students. Three students didn't want to go into industry because they already had industry training before they joined the MEng program. They wanted to be at KGI, actually doing laboratory-based work, and that, that's fine. Five of the 17 students were in at uh, Amgen in Thousand Oaks. We had students at Genentech, at Gilead, and many other uh, companies that uh, in, in Southern California, Northern California, and actually as far uh, east as uh, New York and New Jersey. So um, we have a no very wide um, uh, network of industry. And I also talked about the industry-led team master's project. This is the projects that are brought in to KGI from industry. So you, if you look carefully, you'll see there are two ways we network you with industry. One, we actually uh, 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 send you to industry for your summer internship. The second, we actually bring projects from industry to KGI. Okay, so whether you want to go to industry or whether you want to stay here at KGI and work on an industry-sponsored project, the experience is very much the same. Uh, so the, here are some of the job opportunities, process and product development, manufacturing science, and, and I appreciate that some of these may not uh, mean a lot to you, but I do assure you these are serious, serious, uh, each of these bullet points are serious job opportunities for our, uh, for our uh, candidates that graduate. Again, I think I've been through this uh, slide in multiple time and um, I'll, I'll skip through them. Uh, in terms of entrance requirements, um, we have a set of entrance needs. Uh, undergraduate, you need to have a degree either in uh, life sciences or sciences. In fact, we have students here who've come in with degrees in chemistry, applied chemistry, as well as biology, molecular biology, uh, microbiology, life sciences or sciences as a whole, or engineering. We have students with first degrees in chemical engineering and mechanical engineering. And we have this year uh, engineering, someone with a degree in electrical engineering. So because of that, we, will, uh, we have courses, which we call ramp up courses, remedial courses, that will build the basic, the areas that may be lacking in your first degree. So for example, uh, students who come to us with basic life science courses will take a series of engineering courses. And it's my, my, my privilege to teach many of those courses. For example, we have a very, very applied, uh, and we teach the courses we put together. Uh, believe you me when I say these are student-centric. They are designed for people who want to go into biopharmaceutical processing. So we have courses on mathematics and statistics that I know from my own 30, 40 years of experience, both in academia and industry, that you will need when you go to industry. So the kind of maths and statistics we teach are focused on what you need when you get in there into industry. And we have similar courses for engineers, but they are on the other side. So with engineers, we have a series of basic life science courses in basic biochemistry, molecular biology, and, and so on and so forth. Hey there. So the the program that we have, the program that we have is uh, these programs are uh, accredited already. All of our programs are accredited uh, by WASC, and we are also building towards receiving accreditation by ABET. Uh, those of you who are in engineering know that ABET is an important accreditation board, and because the Master of Engineering is a relatively uh, young uh, program, we need to build up a certain number of uh, years of uh, of, of uh, service before we can go and receive accreditation. We are very optimistic that when they look at the statistic, uh, they'll be pleased. Uh, here I've highlighted 
the way the program works. I already touched on uh, how the program works. You see here two, effectively two buckets of uh, groups that enter, those who have their bachelor's in life sciences and those who have their bachelor's in engineering. The, uh, they, uh, they all take certain core topics, but they also have these remedial courses that they have to based on their first degree. And uh, the summer options, I mentioned some of those. Remember the summer internship, industry internship, uh, TMP, Team Masters project. You can do a TM, you can do an independent research here at KGI. We are also developing contacts with our partners in Europe, academic institutions, where you can uh, go and study abroad. Uh, and this is something that we are uh, evolving uh, more. And then the year two, the year two, again, everybody will do the same courses in year two. And the probably by far the most important, the, the capstone course is that team design project that I referred to uh, earlier on. Yeah, I have been through these uh, foundational courses, engineering courses, bioprocessing courses. And in fact, there may be even, yes, here is an even uh, longer list of courses that, uh, that we have. And you see on the right hand side in the box, the number of total number of uh, credits or units that you have to accumulate over the two years, 66. And you do roughly about half of them in year one and the other half in year two. And just to give you an example of how important the capstone project is, the capstone project that team design on its own is equivalent to 12 credit courses. Most courses that you will take traditionally would be around one to three credits. Okay, so the, that capstone project is a pretty important deal. Uh, again, just uh, this, I think I've talked to uh, to this uh, slide already. These are the nine and the the process that they did, the design that they did, which was to dis uh, develop a process facility to manufacture uh, biosimilar to Humera. They the students actually came up with a name. They took it exceptionally seriously. They not only uh, designed the process and facility, but they also sized the market the revenue, the cost, all of those. Remember, I talked about the business model that I, I talked about. They received a lot of training here because we have all of those uh, core competencies in business uh, part of the world. So we had uh, colleagues from the business group that came and gave them lectures and courses, and they put all of that together as part of this thing. And here is actually a 3D model of their process that they created. Uh, we are very proud of that, actually. And there is a video here. I don't know whether it can be seen. Is can it? Can they see it? Probably not, because this is yeah. This is a uh, this is actually an animation of the uh, the whole design that uh, is available, and and they created that also to make it visually very simple for 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 people to see. Dr. Shamlo, you mentioned that um, students coming from electrical engineering background yes. and mechanical engineering background can be admitted to this program. Yes. So I'm curious about um, what are some transferable knowledge and outlook, or how do, can they integrate their engineering background into yes. biopharmaceutical yes. processing? Yes, this is a very, very good question. It's amazing how much knowledge they have and it's, uh, for example, uh, we use some of the, believe it or not, some of the most sophisticated engineering tools that are available out there to design the, the process and the facility that I mentioned. Mathematical models and other types of models that, and mechanical engineers are exceptionally good in that area. Mm -hmm. I will mention to you just one, and I apologize if uh, 
if you you don't quite get what I'm talking about, but please go out there and and uh, check this out. Well, actually, maybe I, I just give you a simple example. All of us over the past uh, couple of weeks have been watching the news uh, on TV, and you've seen these uh, simulation of the tornadoes that are happening in Florida. You remember all these color, the red, the blue, uh, that are simulation of the tornadoes. Mm -hmm. And you notice people on the TV talk about the US model versus the European model, how they predict the uh, weeks before the tornado gets there, they can predict the path of the tornado and where it will end up. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, we use exactly the same uh, mathematical softwares, exactly the same mathematical techniques to understand how bioreactors in operate and how to optimize the operation of the bio before we actually design. A bioreactor that I'm talking about in which those cells, remember the mm -hmm. Cho cells grow, a bioreactor can be as big as a 20,000 liter, can cost as much as 10, 15 million dollars to put together and operate. This is not something that you want to design uh, without checking every aspect of the design. And therefore, when you really get to that stage, detailed modeling, sophisticated simulation of everything that happens in that bioreactor is becoming an essential. And we find that really people that have engineering background mm -hmm. can, can grow. Not everybody wants to go into that aspect of bioprocessing, but those who have the uh, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, they can, once we give them the foundational courses in life sciences, mm -hmm. they can put that together and develop their careers into that field. The life sciences can build their engineering, basic engineering, and develop their careers into other fields. So really what I'm saying, I've taken a long time to get there, we build on those foundations yes. that you've started in your undergraduate. Don't be, don't, you know, just my, my um, uh, really recommendation advice is that if the area of biopharmaceutical, if these uh, therapies that I mentioned earlier on, if they excite you and you want to be part of that excitement, uh, don't be afraid. Come and uh, do this, apply for the seven week B suite uh, program and then find out. Uh, you'll have seven weeks to talk and go around uh, uh, the uh, facilities that KGI ha has to offer. And if you don't find the engineering part, MEng interesting, we have many other programs that, uh, that I'm sure will be of value. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Shimlo, can we jump to the B suite? Yes, we are page. there. This We're is there actually the, this is uh -huh. the this is the B suite program. You can see bioprocessing summer undergraduate internship training and educational program. B suite, a mouthful, but B suite. Most people remember B suite. This year was between 19th of June and 4th of August 2017, just about when the uh, universities end. Uh, this is when it will, um, uh, June to August of 2017 again, this is a small group of students that, that we had. We had 40, uh, 40 students this year, and for, again, June to August of 2018 uh, for, uh, for the coming year. Uh, apply, uh, I, if you go to KGI's website, uh, you will find lots of information in there and how to apply. Um, we have four laboratories here um, that you will rotate. Each week you spend uh, time in one of these labs and you will work on both individual projects as well as team projects. The team projects are actually mini small versions of the team design project because we want to get the concept and idea of how we do things, uh, except that you do it in, in seven weeks. So in fact, one of the teams actually looked at k -Truda. Another group looked at a molecule called Avestin. 
another one, Herceptin. These are all real molecules. I urge you to go and check these out. Uh, Avestin uh, is, a, is a drug for cancer. Herceptin is a, one of the best uh, drugs for re breast cancer in women. And when you look at the statistics, you can see what a dramatic impact this has had on the life of patients. So we take these drugs that are out there on the market and we teach our students how it would, these drugs were discovered, how they were made, and how they were manufactured and, and uh, marketed. And then, we also, and then we use that as the basis for predicting uh, the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so learn the past and use that as a ba base to predict uh, the future. So yeah. this is, yes, yeah. this is a great program. So all the students can apply with yes. a degree in science yes. or engineering. Yes, actually, actually, you don't, uh, you'll be pleased to know, you don't have to have completed your degree. So uh, juniors, we had in the 40 students that we had, we had, I believe, about 15, 16 that were uh, sophomores. Mm -hmm. uh, we had 11 that were see, uh, com had already completed their degrees. Mm -hmm. We had about, I think, uh, another 18, 19 who were senior. In other words, they had one more year to finish. Mm -hmm. And a few juniors. So we had the whole pipeline of people. And you know, uh, Kat, uh, that when we go to many of these presentations, uh, uni local universities, and talk to seniors, uh, they usually tell us that, you know, if they only knew about their options six months or a year earlier, where they were able, they could make decisions. So that is really the reasons why we created this uh, B-Suite internship. Mm -hmm. to provide young people the opportunity and time to come and experience. And hopefully then they can make informed decisions. Yes. Uh, and and they, also, they also see what life sciences is about. Mm -hmm. So the only interest we are asking you is, are you interested in the whole area of life sciences? That's really the only requirement, whether you're doing engineering or life science degrees. Are you interested? Are you considering life sciences as a career option? Mm -hmm. um, the rest is uh, our admission office and the uh, faculty and the staff here at uh, KGI. Yes, and then we do have uh, this program is great, and then we also accept international applicants. We Inter do. Absolutely, yes. we had a student from uh, actually from India this year, and it took some time to bring her over, but she came. Mm -hmm. And she had a great time and she had such a good time. She said she was going to come. In fact, I'm looking at a photo over on the desk there. She said she was going to apply and, and come uh, to do the Master of Engineering program. And um, by the way, I said to you that uh, we had 11 students who had completed their degree. I'm so pleased to say that all those 11s are now part of the Master of Engineering. Uh, some of them uh, had already applied to come to KGI, but they were not 100% sure. So this was a way of really confirming that they liked what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So whether you are applying to come to KGI next in 2018, whether you have, you have one more year to finish, whether you have two more years to finish, if you're thinking of life sciences uh, as a career, please uh, go on this in, in site and check out the B-Suite program and apply for it. So, um, yes, thank you, Dr. Shandel, You're welcome. for this You're welcome. session. You're yes, welcome. it's been very exciting and thank you. it's great to learn a lot of detail and scientific um, outlook of the career in bioprocessing. Thank you. So um, let's see if our audience have any questions about this program. Hello. So participants of this um, webinar, please raise your questions in the chat box or in the question session so that we can address your questions um, individually. Let's see.
Alrighty, so I think um, this is yes. Okay. This is this okay. is the end of this webinar, and we hope that you learn a lot of not only technical perspective, but also how can you transfer your interest and measure to a really promising um, industry. And actually, we're able to um, invest ourselves and dedicate it to industry that make healthcare more affordable, more accessible, and then we're curing, finding a cure not only, sure. but we're saving lives of millions of people and improving their health conditions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, so thank you all for participating in this webinar, and we will see you next time. Thank you.